Um, you are upgrading your forecast Thank today. You. Tell us uh, your thinking behind that upgrade. What gives you the confidence to be more optimistic? Well, we had, again, uh, a good second quarter, continued performance in this first half year, and with that we conclude a very strong first half year for DSM in 2017. All our business, materials and nutrition, are delivering growth ahead of the markets we operate in. Profit-wise, net profit up more than 40%, EBITDA up 16% due to the growth in materials and in nutrition and of course helped also by our cost reduction program. So with all of that we are just confident about the remainder of the year, we are confident about the future and we were able to increase slightly our outlook even for the remainder of the year. So that confidence, um, Faiki, good to speak to you this morning. Um, Talk to me about China. The last time we caught up with you, Stephen Engel talk, caught up with you. You were in China. You were talking about, yeah, I can achieve a double-digit growth in that area. It's 13, nearly 13 percent of your revenue. You still confident of that kind of number? Where is that? Where are the where are the strongest shoots of growth for DSM? No, true. Uh, also, in the second quarter, we have been growing again. When we met last time, we were talking about the first quarter growth 10 percent, more than 10 percent. And again, this second quarter also clearly above 10 percent growth in China. And of course, in China, we are specifically helped by the urbanization. People move from the rural areas to the city and start to eat processed food with our ingredients in it, buy a car or electronics with our materials in it. So we are helped by the economic development in China, which has an overall growth of about 7%. And we grow uh, clearly above 10 in, in China. Uh, we grow very well in India. Of course, Brazil is doing a little bit uh, worse, as we all know. But also Europe, we saw picking up uh, of the economy, in fact, in all segments. And the U.S. is still also very strong. So at this moment, uh, of course, there's economic volatility. And of course, we see the currency volatility. But DSM is positioned more to specialties, more to solutions. So I feel confident. OK, so you feel confident. Um, the, it's been really fascinating to watch the role of activist investors, in particular in the Dutch market, Feike, and I wonder if we could tap into your <laughs> thoughts and your experience here, because you, of course, uh, have uh, been pursued to some extent by third point. Um, the economy minister in the Netherlands has been seeking new legal protection measures for Dutch companies. What prospect of success, and are they required? Yeah, our approach is you talk about the past, but um, uh, I think the best uh, that any company can do, by the way, and I think we are doing that, is having a clear strategy, uh, uh, a transparent communication about your strategy, setting ambitious targets and delivering uh, against those. I think, to be honest, that, that is the most important. And of course, every company, also our company, you can find it at the website, have their so-called protection mechanisms, and uh, that is common in, in the Netherlands. On top of that, the Dutch government is looking to measures like a delay of a one-year period and looking to measures how they can prevent that Dutch companies get hostile takeovers. And that is more a nationalistic um, interest of the Dutch government who wants to protect the Netherlands. And to be honest, that is their job. Uh, my job is not to be too much involved in those kind of discussions, but to manage our company in the best possible way, like I was saying. Um, there has been a, a rise in activism. And you, as you say, your job as, as CEO is to protect DSM. Now, some people in the marketplace would say that because, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're not going for any major acquisitions, that this could leave you exposed to activists. Do you feel exposed to the risk of an activist joining the, the roster again? No, uh, um, uh, I don't think so. I mean, I feel exposed to uh, the pressure of the financial markets every single day uh, during my whole life as CEO, and we need to deliver, and that is just a part of the job. But like I said, clear strategy, clear communication, ambitious targets, and delivering is the most important. And remember, uh, we are halfway at this moment of our strategic period 2015-2018. We are at this moment delivering ahead of schedule on our growth initiatives, better than the markets we operate in. We deliver fully on our cost reduction programs. We are increasing our return on capital employed, even more than what we promised. We are monetizing, you are pinpointing on that, we are monetizing our joint ventures. 
And at this moment, we are not in for big acquisition, but of course, that will come back. And the monetization of the joint ventures, the money still has to come in. So let's cross that bridge when we are there. And we have a step up in our progress on the ambitions we have, strong ambitions on sustainability. So I think we are well on track, and to be honest, with all of the above, we are ahead of our own schedule. So we do well, we said, let's stay the course, let's finish the job, and let's do our work. I'm writing you up as pragmatic and confident uh, as we speak, Feike. Um, we've got a story this morning that the Republicans, they're ready to go after major tax reform in the United States of America. What impact would a change in individual tax and corporate tax have for DSM? Is this important to you? Um, uh, um, reduced tax regimes or uh, reduced tax rates in, company, in countries will always help us. But to be honest, we have already a good and competitive uh, tax rate. I think it's fair where we are at this moment. And I don't see a lot of upsides in um, all kinds of tax changes in the world, what that would uh, mean for DSM. I feel confident if we can remain where we are at this moment.